Well, hello once again, fellow Star Trek fans. I got another little goodie for you, Star Trek related. Continuing in the series of the Eagle Moss build, the USS Enterprise NCC 1701-D. Um, it seemed like forever to get here, but I am ecstatic that I got the second shipment in. So, we finally got the second shipment. So let's go ahead, we'll go to the model bench, and we'll open it up. Let's see now. Well, it says that with the first shipment that we got, there was a list of items. And with this one, it just says shipment number two. And the biggest, <clears throat> the biggest difference is the price. The first shipment was $4.95. And this one was sixty-one forty. So let's see what we get. All right, looking in. Ooh. Oh, check this out, guys. The structure of the primary hull or saucer section. And that would be part six. <clears throat> Let's see, what's this section? It looks like the plates. This one might go around the bridge area. We'll see, we'll find out. There are some screws. And this one is part five. And I will put up pictures of everything to show you better detail of uh, all the stuff that we get. And oh, this looks like looks like the deflector dish. Nice. And this is part three. USS Enterprise NCC 1701-D. Nice. You can see the, the blue deflector dish and the part that goes in the middle. And there's a circuit board. And in there looks like, like a power pack or something. We'll see. And I don't know what those are. Maybe they could be contacts for batteries. We'll see. <clears throat> what else we got? Let's see. This is part... Let's see what is nice again for the saucer section you can see the windows and you can see a vent over there and we've got another tray for screws and more escape pods and you can see the wire bundle and it looks like all of the windows that are going to go in for the frames. You can see where the um, the escape pods are going to go. So nice. Let's see. This is number... This one is actually number four. The Enterprise NCC 1701D. <clears throat> and let's see. We've got magazine number two. We're gonna, we're gonna go through that and check it out. Up, oh, and it looks like we have. This looks like a folder. Nice, brand new. And this looks like it's what you put all of the magazines into. This was one of the um, the bonuses that you got when you pre-ordered. So we'll go into that a little bit more. And that's everything in this shipment. So, let's 
Let's get all that out of the way. And put this up to show you guys. And what I want to do is I'll I'll show you some of the uh, magaz I'll show you the magazine because this one comes with the second issue in the uh, the build. And it's got a nice picture of the ship on the front. Not as much magazines that we got in the first issue. It shows you the steps. So that's what we're most looking forward to. And we've got stage three parts. Beautiful. And if you want, you can pause the video. It's gonna be in high definition, so you should be able to see everything really nice and clear. <clears throat> stage four. You got the lovely panels that are gonna go on the frame that I showed you. Stage five. Look like the area around the, uh, the island on the saucer section. And stage six, the frame that I had shown you guys going to be nice and sturdy. And we go to the stage three, the assembly. The illustrations, red is used for screws, directions, arrows, and connection points. Yellow is for the new parts in each step. Gray shows the assembly so far, and blue shows the illuminated parts. You can see Begin by inserting a battery box nut and moving over to B. <clears throat> the deflector dish, lovely. Screws with codes ending in the letters M, such as B, M, C, M, drive into metal. Those ending in a letter P, such as B, P, and C, P, drive into plastic. That's a pretty good tip to have. Moving on to section C. <clears throat> the insertion of the bulbs, the main deflector dish, fitting the electronics. Before plugging the lights into the PCB board to check the lights are working, check that the, plate, the pins in the PCB socket are aligned. Oh, this with the first LED. This is nice. Looking forward to seeing how this works. And part D goes into what the uh, the circuit board was for. At this point, you can test the electronics on your model and make sure they're working correctly. Take the plug at the end of the main deflector dish and insert it into the socket marked D on the PCB board. Really nice. And we're going to of course, we're going to test that. And then <clears throat> we see the uh, a piece from the first build section that has the bridge. And that goes into that board as well. Moving on to stage four. And it shows you the parts of the ship that we will be working with. the dorsal starboard saucer sections. In this phase of the assembly, you put together the first three deck panels of the saucer section as well as fitting them into the lighting kit. So you can see the escape pods that go into position and the insertion of the windows. So not all of them are going to be illuminated. Some of them are gonna be blacked out And moving on to part B of this section. When inserting the windows, you may find it easier to slot an object under one of the deck panels so that the deck panel is at a slighter gradient. 
You can use tweezers to fit the windows if it assembly is too fiddly. Because, you know, they kind of like to jump around. <laughs> they got to like they got a mind of their own. Combining two panels worked on so far, secure them together on a th with the three BP screws. Again, those screws will be going into the plastic. <clears throat> Part C shows us the technique, the windows, and the escape pods. You can see the finished version of it. And then the insertion of the bulbs. You know, they have the sections that hold the bulbs into place so you don't have to glue them or anything. They don't click into place, they're just held in with the, uh, the covers. Section D, the deck panel. Begin by removing the adhesive backing from the transparent emitter pod and sticking it in the corresponding recess in deck panel C. Finally, ensure that two deck panel parts are properly aligned and secure the deck panel A parts to deck panel C with two screws. Again, these instructions look pretty straightforward. Moving on to E. Now you have finished building. You have a chance to ensure that the electronics are fitted and the phase are working correctly. Insert the three plugs and the three panel lights into the sockets marked A, C, and D on the PCB board. Then plug the battery pack into F socket of the PCB. It should illuminate the lights that are plugged in. So it's nice that you can make sure everything is working as you go along. Stage five. <clears throat> And you can, you guys remember that's the section we built in video one, or the build one. In this stage, deck two is completed as the main shuttle bay door fits into place. As an elegant curve of the upper saucer begins to spread out around the main bridge. Nice. Step A. Retrieve the main bridge, deck two assembly, and place the main shuttle bay door on the rear of the deck. Beautiful. Moving on to step B, position the deck front base along the front underside of deck two and fix into place with four EM screws. So this section is gonna be growing. We'll put the sections on around the bridge area. Looking forward to doing that. And stage six assembly. The network of skeletal support will not be visible when your Enterprise D is complete, but it is essentially a part of your model structure, which begins to take shape here. And it shows upper skeleton four. That would be Correct me if I'm wrong, around the vicinity of 10 forward. So step A, take the upper skeleton and the support and insert two screws and a set. So it shows you the, right now, this is not going to have um, anything on it. It just kind of goes on to the frame. Going to be a nice solid ship. Again, you don't want to over tighten the screws, but make sure they're snug and they're not going to move. Part B or step B. That's when you put the screws in. And for C, take the skeletal support and slide two screws and now you do it to another section. So I showed you guys that and I'll show you a little more detail. <clears throat> those parts. So that was the sections. That was the build for step or shipment two. And the little goodies that we get in the magazine is separa separation anxiety. The second part of Chase Designing the D, the concept artist Andrew Probert shares the secrets of saucer separation and sheds light on the ship's many windows. That might be a good read. Like I said, you guys can pause the video. I'll make sure that you'll be able to read it. 
A page from Proverbs sketchbook with the date December 1st, 1986, shows a battle section separation concept alongside a size comparison with the movie Enterprise and a sketch of the warp nacelles. Nice, uh, nice illustration. You can see, interestingly, the bottom, what they were going to do, where half the saucer section leaves. I mean, we're so used to seeing that. It would be odd to see that. In Probert's concept sketch in December 1st, 1986, the red areas show where the possible battle section would connect to the rest of the ship. The rear fins were conceived as warp engines, with the final design uh, which the final design lacks. I don't know about you, but I love all these little goodies. <clears throat> Another concept. Previously drafted side elevation from December 15th, 1986. Probert makes the separation lines visible through the side of the saucer. And again, we've gotten so used to this. It would be odd to see the saucer the uh, saucer section cut in half. Well, it looks like we got some of my favorite. Let's see, was that the Enterprise? Rendered in a marker in 1979, Probert's earliest ideas for starship saucer separation stem from his work on the Star Trek The Motion Picture. You can see the Enterprise refit, and that would really be uh, interesting to see huh guys supposedly all of the enterprise or constitutional classes were able to re remove their saucer section as well labeled enterprise components probert sketch from december 22nd 1986 shows an idea for large detachable section of the saucer and engines can be jettisoned as well as the more familiar separations such as the captain's yacht rows of lifeboats, and the main saucer itself. Nice. It's pretty cool to see how all this stuff comes together, especially when we're used to the finished product. See the, the sketching. And that will be the deck plan. Robert sketched his deck plan on February 10th, 1987, when Roddenberry settled on Galaxy as a starship class of the new Enterprise. Robert named the same as well as Ambassador, which was later used as class name for the Enterprise C when it appeared in third generation Star Trek The Next Generation episode yesterday's Enterprise, and that's one of my favorites. I love the Enterprise C. <clears throat> now we see the size comparison. This technical drawing of the Enterprise D with its original series counterpart established the, retro, the relative size to the newly designed ship. And of course, personally, she's my favorite, the Enterprise Constitution class. A more detailed deck plan than the face than the other page lists Jim's churches, two shopping areas, and a bachelor's office quarters among its facilities. So that's pretty cool, all the different things. Let me show you guys that. To demonstrate the size of the Enterprise D, the art department overlaid it on a map of Paramount Lot, intended in the front cover for the next generation. It was swiftly replaced from the Reddit Director's Guide and replaced for fear of offending size-conscious studio execs. So that's the studio lot from the ver from the aerial view and the Enterprise relative size. Visible underneath the saucer in a final Enterprise D design, but was never referenced on screen. The captain's yacht is compared to smaller shuttles in Probert's concept class sketch on March 19th. 1987. The next um, articles titled Hands on Decks. Andrew Proberts didn't only design the bridge and the exterior of the Enterprise D, his steady hand set the direction for every single deck. 
you can see the was at the officers lounge you can see the sizes of the enterprise Probus sketch from June 5th, 1987 provides a scale for the model enterprises seen in the, the conference lounge. It echoes the paintings of earlier ships with the name set on recreation decks of the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701, and Star Trek The Motion Picture. <clears throat> and it looks like we're getting into the, the warp core. Headed engine core. This image from February 15th, 1987 shows how the energy conduits coming up through the floor and down the ceiling would meet in main engineering before the branching off through the walls to port and starboard. The set was built to adhere to this design on a slightly larger scale than shown. And that's Geordi, probably, <laughs> near the warp core. A far looser sketch from around the same time as the drawing above, this view of the main engineering shows how the dilithium crystals in the heart of the warp core is accessed via a slide-out chamber. I remember Mr. Scott changing the dilithium crystals. Um, did Geordi ever actually change out the crystals in uh, the next generation? And then we've got the battle station. And what is this? This is interesting. Labeled Holodeck Portal. Probert's marker rendering from July 11, 1987 shows crew members interacting with always visible holodeck arch in the otherwise simulated outdoor environment. Wouldn't it be great if they really had holodecks? Keen to ensure that the interior sets match the exterior shape of the Enterprise D, Probert sketched out the concepts with the observation deck seen in cutaway with human profile for scale. It shows windows in blue and could feasibly work the edges of the saucer section. This kind of observation deck was never built, however. What's next? Labeled Sick Base Service Corridor, the colorful set design of February 22nd, 1987, shows the interim that linked the main sick bay to Dr. Crusher's office. Headed Small Dorsal Lounge, overlooking the warp engines, this concept drawing from May 26, 1987, resembles the officer's lounge seen in Star Trek The Motion Picture which was planned to include a new version or new view of the starboard warp nacelle of the refitted USS Enterprise NCC-1701. July 6, 1987, this unrealized design for an airlock style door and sick bay headed med lab detail. Environmental chamber, humanoid figure is shown for scale. And drawn up for October 26th, 1987, a technical drawing labeled Data's Quarters. Computer wall showed how Admiral Kirk's quarters from the motion picture could be addressed to serve in the new series. That's interesting. And another little yummy little morsel of Star Trek info, shipbuilding. <clears throat> I got a beautiful picture of the model. Three main models were used to represent the USS Enterprise NCC 1701 D on screen, each one painstakingly crafted by teams at the top of their game. As for this one, the first stu study model for the Enterprise D lacks the elegance of the final design, with a less tapered secondary hull and more uniformly circular saucer and warp nacelle. There she's starting to come together. It's gorgeous, huh? The largest complete filming model of the Enterprise D could be split apart into saucer and battle sections, indicating wiring ran through both hulls. Powering fluorescent lighting tubes is seen emerging from the front and uncapped at the port side warp nacelle. Man, I would have loved to have been able to buy that.
Curved plexiglass sections form the bases of both the master models serving as a guide for the overall shape of the vessel. Sanding the master models down to a smooth, regular finish was a long, exacting task. Any imperfections would be mirrored in the resulting silicone models. Oh, they got some, I love these pictures. Shown here in various stages of the construction, the original Enterprise D models were built between March and May 1987. The construction team included Greg Jine, Ease O. Young, Bill George, Howie Weed, Wesley Seeds, Bill Concannon, Con excuse me, Sean Casey. Larry Tan, overseen by Jeff Mann. Subsequent four-foot model not shown was built by Jane and Bruce McRae, Dana White, David Takemura, Michael Akuda, Ed Mirecki, Dave Merriman Jr. during autumn of 1989. And I'm probably butchering their names. I'm sorry. I apologize. You see where the main hull would go? some more beautiful pictures of them working on the model. Look at that. That's that's pretty wild. The lower half of the saucer model section, complete with metal supports, completed six-foot model being mounted on an armature for filming. So she was pretty big. She weighed a lot. And that's everything in this magazine. So, with that being done, let's take a look at the folder. So it's, it's heavy cardboard construction. And it's got a glossy coat. And it's got a beautiful picture of the Enterprise on it. And it says Star Trek The Next Generation, the Enterprise D. And on the inside, it has little plastic inserts. And it has uh, little instructions. So these are almost like wedges that wedge the magazines together to keep them in place. So... That's all well and good. Let's take a look at the pieces. All right, so let's do the unboxing. I'm dying to open this up to see what we get. First one we're gonna do is we're gonna do part three. And this has a deflector dish and open it up and like the first shipment they have these little compartments or little trays where you can keep everything in to keep it safe and the cardboard comes off relatively easy and I don't know if you can see that but it's got the little tray in it so you put it upside down and you're able to remove the top like a cap so let's take a look at this Make sure you guys can see that. First thing is we got the PCB, the board. Very reminiscent of the um, polar lights. For those of you that have done the 1350 build with the lighting kit for the Enterprise. And we'll actually be able to test the lights with the board. So that's the first thing that we get. And that's in the deflector dish housing. Beautiful. You can see where the lights are gonna go. Nice. 
nice. And we got the the blue area. That lovely blue that we get from the deflector dish. And let's see, we got the, the center. Let me see if I can get this out. You can see the absolute center of the deflector dish. Again, everything is pre-painted, pre-colored. And I'm thinking that this is going to go in like that. Or, sorry, more likely it's going to go in that way. Ah, it'll go in one way, one of those ways. And we have the, this time we have a bolt in the uh, packet with a screw. As far as I know, that's the first bolt that we see. And we have more BP screws. You remember the instructions said that everything with a P in it will go into plastic. And we've got the wires. The wire is labeled D. Make sure you guys can see that. And it's got the bulb. Excuse me, it's got the two bulbs to illuminate the deflector dish. All right, let's see what this is now. And this is actually the battery or the power pack. And you can see it's looking like it's going to take three AA batteries. And it's, this has a little alligator clip, and that's going to go into the circuit board, um, the wiring. It looks like one of the wires is the positive is not connected because that's going to go. Let me get this section out for you guys. It's not connected because that's going to go on to the positive part or the side of the leads because you're going to have to be able to change the batteries out right and now we have a series of small little parts they like to jump around so let's see there's two of these I'll make sure they don't this one doesn't jump out again let's see what else what is this looks like more more of a housing And the final piece is probably the other half of that housing. Nice. So that's the deflector dish. That's everything in the tray. And that was part three, so let's move on to part four. All right, moving on to part four. You can see we got the Aztec ink. You can see on the plates of the hull, the saucer section, a primary hull, and one of the vents. Let's go ahead, we'll open it up. Again, this is part four. And they open up relatively easy. And again, it has that kind of a, a drawer or a tray. And you can just flip it over and you can kind of take it out. All right, let's see what we've got. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's start with the hole plating. And this is metal U205L 
Oh, I hope the camera picks it up. You can see the Azteking. Isn't that beautiful? This is the easy way to do Azteking. <laughs> Let me show you guys what I'm working on right now. I just finished this section of the aft end of the starboard side of the nacelle. And this is the hard way <laughs> to do the Azteking. But that video will come out, be coming out very soon. Um, the finishing of the Aztec painting on the nacelle for the refit, 1350 scale. But this is the Enterprise D. You can see the absolutely gorgeous Aztecing. And then there's a couple more. And this is plastic. You can see the Aztecing again. Very, very nice. You can see where the windows are going to go and the escape pods. And the next part, this is plastic as well. Let me show you guys the Azteking on here. And where the windows are going to go. And this one is was at U310. And this would be the parts. This is plastic as well. U309AL. And you can see where the lights are going to be held in place. So looking like these will be the backs to one of the sections where you can see that the rectangles where the lights go and there are two of these you can see the the other ones U310AL and reflective so it reflects the lighting very well that'll be in the windows and there is a bag of, let's see, the screws, and these are DM screws. So these will be going into metal. And BP. And these will be put into the plastic pieces. And let's take a look at the wiring. I think we have multiple wires. This one is B, lettered B. And there are two bulbs. This one is also lettered B. And there are two bulbs. I think they all have the same. Yeah, this one is also labeled B. And it's got two bulbs as well. Because what it's looking like, they're going to do each side. And the reflective part is going to reflect all the lights to illuminate all the windows. Now this one looks like a this looks like a vent. Make sure you guys see that. And this one actually has an adhesive on the back to stick it into place. Again, there's um, to be no gluing for this model. And I don't know about those soldering. It might be soldering because of the, the last pack that I showed you. Now we'll take a look at the escape pods. There's five per tree. Let's see, there's one. There's three of them. And I'll show you better. Well, the camera will pick it up. Nice. And now we move into the window sections. And there's three trees, uh, well, excuse me, there's four trees that have the darked out, the dark out black windows. So these will be the rooms, obviously, where the lights are off. You know, like the studio model in the series or in the movies, not all of the lights are on. There are some off here and there. So there's four of those. And moving on to the clear, there are four of the clear. You can see, 
Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten per tree. And you can see where they they go in. And again, these are going to click into place and be held in place with the uh, with the backing, where you don't have to glue anything into place. And that, let's see, make sure that's everything in a tray. So that's everything for part four. Uh, let's move on to part five. All right, moving on to part five. You can see it's got the little cardboard piece, the Enterprise D build, and part five. And I think it's just the barcode and information on the back. And it's got the shuttle bay. So let's go ahead and take a look. And the plastic bag also has that kind of a tray thing going on. And let's see, we have screws. We have EM screws. So these are going to go into metal. And it's the first piece. This, this is metal. Let's see if I can get the Aztec ink to show for you guys. Oh yeah, look at that. Very nice. And this is going to go around the island or where the bridge area is. This one is metal as well. Let me get the show the Aztec ink for you. Very nice. Let's see. And there's one section left. And this is also metal. I'm going to get the Aztec ink to show for you guys. See it? I hope the camera picks it up as nice as it looks on um, film as it does with your eyes. Very nice. And let's see. There's... Let me show you guys the shuttle bay pieces. And I think that's it for the bag. Yep, that's it. So we got the shuttle bay doors. And this is plastic. And you can see the two screw sections that are going to hold it in place. Can't you guys already sense an aftermarket kit for this that would have the actual shuttle bay where you can open up the doors? That would be pretty cool. And these are BM. So these screws are going to go into metal. And that is everything that's in part five. So let's move on. And we still have another section. And we got part six to go through. Okay, moving on to part six. You can see the Enterprise, a beautiful picture. And more writing on the back. I'll let you guys pause that if you want to read it all. So, let's go ahead and open this one up. So, we got another tray. And this looks like it's the skeleton. And, well, this feels like metal. Yep, this is actually a metal frame. Nice. This thing is going to be like a tank when it's done. Very sturdy. And probably very heavy, too. But that's okay, because it'll last a lifetime. Or more. You can pass this thing down to your children and all your future generation of Star Trek fans. And let's see, we have one more drawer in this one. There's an envelope, and the screws are marked BM. And these screws will be going into the metal pieces. And 
There's two pieces right here. They kind of lock into the tray. And are these metal? Yep, these are metal as well. As you can see, or remember that I showed you in the uh, instructions, they're gonna go and on and start to form the structure of the ship. And let's get this one. This one, this one is metal as well. So that's a good thing. The more metal, the better, the more sturdy. Yes, it'll be heavier, but like I said, it won't uh, be prone to breaking, especially with all these screws. And that's everything in part six. So my friends, this was shipment two of the USS Enterprise NCC 1701-D build. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the actual build of these pieces and sections in another video so it's not very, very long. Um, I'm probably going to do that from now on. I'll do an unboxing video to show you guys everything that it comes with, as well as the free, the free goodies that come with the pre-shipment or the pre-order. And then I'll do the build in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm looking forward to doing the next video of this with you. And we're going to put everything together. And I'll see you guys very, very soon.